What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the Beastly Gamer channel. So today I want to talk a little bit more about Konami, but not in the way that I've been talking about it. You guys know I've been making videos about Konami and Hideo Kojima and Silent Hills and all this stuff going on around Konami and how in my opinion they're making probably the dumbest decisions they've ever made going totally mobile, letting their golden goose Hideo Kojima leave the company, canceling Silent Hills with uh, Guillermo del Toro and Norman Reedus, all these bode for the thought process of a company that has lost touch with reality uh, because all of those things bring in tons and tons of money but they haven't just started being an idiotic company back in 2014 uh, Koji Igarashi actually left the company and if you guys don't know who Koji is he was behind fantastic classics like Castlevania Symphony of the Night Circle of the Moon I mean, he created tons of Castlevania games and uh, in my opinion some of the best games I've ever played in my life. As many of you know, Castlevania Symphony of the Night is probably in my top five video games of all time. And it's more than likely my favorite 2D side-scrolling action RPG of all time. It's an amazing game. I can't stress how amazing it really is. The soundtrack, uh, the way the, the game is played, the castle turning upside down, all this stuff is really, really amazing. And Koji left Konami because Konami did not believe in his vision that Castlevania was still a relevant game. He, he actually pitched them and pitched other companies the idea of a new Castlevania and they told him no. Because you guys kind of know in the last few years, Konami's been changing Castlevania. They turned it into a 3D God of War clone that really did not bode well for what Castlevania was for the fans. Uh, you know, I'm an old school fan. I love the first Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, Dracula's Curse. Um, I really fell in love with Castlevania, and of course, I do have the later 3D versions of the game. I even have the 3D version on the Nintendo 64. They just do not, uh, they don't translate well into what made the game a magical experience for me. Anyway, Koji Igarashi has started a Kickstarter to fund his spiritual successor for the Castlevania series, and it's called Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. And uh, it looks really, really phenomenal. This is an image of the game. And this is really one of the only images, there's probably about three or four that are online. I'll try to show you them all throughout this gameplay. But it looks really nice. It's a 2.5D side scroller in the vein of Castlevania Symphony of the Night. And his original vision for this only cost $500,000 at minimal. Uh, and so at $500,000, we'd actually get this game. And that's really, really what he wanted. He wanted to create something that he had a passion for, that he feels that Castlevania fans are passionate about. And I've already donated to the Kickstarter. If you guys haven't, please do. It's going to be awesome. So his original Kickstarter only called for $500,000. It did have a few stretch goals uh, initially, so that if, he, if it did reach over the $500,000, that they could include some extra stuff. But within three or four hours, the $500,000 was already met. Which means people like me, as soon as I heard about this Kickstarter, I hopped online and uh, you know gave a few bucks. But this stretch, this game, the stretch goals have already been met, and so now they've added new stretch goals to it. And I'm going to tell you guys the goals that we've already met, what we can expect out of Bloodstained, and it's going to be awesome. At 500,000, of course, we already made that. 600,000 was the first stretch goal, and you get an art book that's been upgraded to hardcover. 700,000, you get a second playable character. At 800,000, you get nightmare difficulty mode. At 850,000, you get voice acting by David Hayter. Do you guys know who David Hayter is? He voiced Snake in the Metal Gear Solid games all the way up until this one. This is the first Metal Gear Solid game that's coming out now, The Phantom Pain, that doesn't have David Hayter voicing the main character. They got Kiefer Sutherland, and they kind of screwed David Hayter over. This is another very poor decision from Konami. Okay, so David Hayter is going to be voice acting in the game. At a million dollars, you get cheat codes. At one million twenty two hundred fifty thousand, you get local co-op, which is going to be amazing. Can you guys imagine if you could play Symphony of the Night with a friend at the same time? It's going to be insane. At 1.5 million, you get a new boss. At 1 point, well, 1 million 750,000, you get a speed run mode, which I know a lot of people are going to be super excited about. At 2 million, you get boss rush mode, which is just you going through bosses. That's going to be insane. That's already been met. At 2.2 2 million 250,000, you get a retro level. And uh, on the website here, it actually has a Nintendo cartridge next to it, so it's going to look like an old school. 
you know, Castlevania game is going to be awesome. And the last stretch goal that they have so far is a classic mode, which allows you to play through the entire game in a classic type of mode graphic style. This is going to be amazing. I love Castlevania. I'm so passionate about it. A lot of people don't really find it fun anymore. And I think that it's kind of unfortunate a lot of people missed out what made Castlevania what it is. If you guys are young, you know, 17, 18, you probably think the last few Castlevanias on PlayStation 3 and 360 are what Castlevania is. Believe me when I say it's not. Do yourself a favor, dig through your old video game lot, pull out your Game Boy Advance, go on eBay and buy Circle of the Moon. It's amazing. It's so awesome. The music, everything about it is amazing. Play Symphony of the Night. I think it's on, it is on PlayStation Network. So you can actually get that on your PS3. It's a PlayStation 1 classic. If you got an NES, break out the first, for me, one of the first RPGs, Castlevania 2 Simon's Quest. Dracula's Curse allows you to switch characters. That's, Simon, that's Castlevania 3. Dracula's Curse has Alucard, who's Dracula's son. You got a pirate and you got a ghost. I mean, it's really, really fun and robust, the stuff they've done with Castlevania over the years. And of course, if you want to just try your hand at one of the hardest games of all time, pick up Castlevania 1 on the NES. It's really, really awesome. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. I love playing this game. I hope you guys liked it. If you do, show some support to the channel and give it a thumbs up. If you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. Go through the catalog and check out some of the other 500 videos. There's a lot of them. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'll see you guys next time. Fucking 
Coming back no more. 